Hello Africans, how are you doing? I hope where you are, you're doing fine. And if you're not doing fine, please do fine. It's good to be fine. Now, I want us to talk about a figure, a very controversial figure we've had in the 21st century. Uh, we've we've had him on the 20th century and a little bit of him in the 21st century. I'm speaking of a very controversial figure that is a black American. He's been spoken about differently by different people. If you ask a white person, they have a different perspective of him. If you ask a black person they have a different perspective of him and these perspectives are direct opposite and now this controversial figure is Khalid Muhammad yes as you've judged by the title Khalid Muhammad Khalid Muhammad was one of the most powerful voices that we had back in the days back in the 90s he reigned in the 70s the 80s and the 90s 2001 I guess or three I think it was 2001 is when he died before he died Khalid Muhammad made some important revelations you know uh, I normally get these comments where black Americans and African diaspora they always tell me me a black messiah they normally say for a long time they've known that the messiah was black and it is us africans we are identifying or we are acknowledging that he is black yes khalid muhammad is basing his arguments on the fact that the white people have been lying to africans for a very long time this is because they knew the power that the black people had and this is just many aspects that the colonizer let me use the word colonizer have lied to the africans africans who are colonized one of the things that um khalid Muhammad spoke about stays with me up to date is that those pictures that Africans place in their homes of white Jesus he tells Africans take those pictures and throw them away because those pictures are not the pictures of the Christ Khalid, according to Khalid Muhammad he is saying that Jesus Christ is black yes he said Jesus Christ is black black as me and maybe as you who is watching this video I can't doubt I can't doubt I also can't agree because Jesus Christ was neither white nor black yes I have my opinion and many people always have problems with me sharing this opinion Opinion. Jesus Christ looked like the people of his times and I know yes revelations hair like wool the skin like bronze or brass you know brass is an alloy an alloy of copper and tin yes copper is red brown and red brown is a characteristics of African people we really have a few people who are black 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 like charcoal no Africa are red brown some people are brown as well we have black so we have a spectrum of colors now without further ado I want us to listen to what Khalid Muhammad has to say about this this black Jesus, his arguments, some of his arguments are true, is very, very true. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy is just on another level that Africans have been fed. I want us to watch this video, look at it carefully, and then by the end of the video, I'll share with you my thoughts where we will have critical analysis. Let's dive in right away. And when I say Jesus up here, I'm not talking about no blonde haired, blue eyed, pale skin, buttermilk complexion, white Jesus. I'm talking about a black Jesus. The Bible says would have nappy hair and his body would be like burnt bronze or brass as though it had been burnt in an oven. Give the white man his white Jesus back, put it in the garbage can, set it out on the corner and let the garbage man pick it up and take it to the garbage dump. It's a form of spiritual genocide, a form of mental genocide and holocaust. We set forth here tonight that the black holocaust is one hundred times worse than the so-called Jew Holocaust. Why do we even need to make a comparison? Because it was the old no good president Buck Toot Jimmy Carter who stepped out and stepped forward when they were beginning to prepare to build the Jewish Holocaust Memorial. It was Jimmy Carter who said that it was the most unspeakable crime in the history of all time. He made a statement of comparison. When we deal with General David Eisenhower, General David Eisenhower made similar statements that we read and we saw on the walls of the Jewish Holocaust Memorial yesterday, making the world to believe that this is the, was the most overpowering crime and atrocity against humankind in the history of all times. Everyone has come and said that it is the worst Holocaust that has ever existed. But all of a sudden, when we come out on you, you now back down and claim that you never made a comparison. Well, tonight, I'm going to make a comparison. We're going to lay the case out and see which Holocaust is the most dreadful, which Holocaust is the most vicious and bestial Holocaust, most 
bloody holocaust ever recorded in the annals of time but you want to deny us because you owe us reparations and you don't want to pay up today the so-called jew holocaust and i say so-called jew because he's not a real jew he's a johnny come lately jew who just crawled out of the caves and hills of europe just a few days ago so you're not even the real jew buddy the so-called jew holocaust lasted you with me because I got to drop this stuff tonight because I'm a true terrorist. I'm a knowledge gangster. I'm a black history hitman. I'm a lie killer urban gorilla. I got to be a roughneck. Got to be a roughneck. It's the only way I know to go. The Jew Holocaust lasted 10 years. But the Holocaust of the black man and woman lasted over 500 years. Let's look at it. One 10 years, one 500 years. Maybe I'm a little confused. Maybe I'm too much of a racist. Maybe I'm too much of a bigot and an anti-Semite when I'm really none of that. But maybe just by chance, 10 years is greater than 500 years. Let's kick the ballistics. You say you lost six million, and we question that. You say you lost six million, but for the sake of argument, we'll give you six million. We lost over 600 million lives in the African, the black Holocaust over the past 6,000 years, and over the past 400 to 500 years, in specific, maybe I'm a little bit confused. Maybe I'm too big a racist or an anti-Semite or a bigot. And maybe somehow six million is greater than 600 million. That possibility is there. You have your Schindler's list, which is really a swindler's list because you were involved in the slave trade. You were involved and you don't want to actually accept your involvement because you too want to escape reparations. You want to escape reparations and what is due the black man and black woman. Let's look at it. We're the chosen people of God. We are a spiritual people by nature, and we feel the pain and suffering of any people anywhere on the face of the planet Earth, even the people who helped to put us in this condition. So maybe we need to reevaluate that. My son looked at some of the Germans killing the Jews, so called Jews, and he said, This is sick, Daddy. And as we looked at it, feeling that, we saw where you talked about the death marches, where the Jews were forced in mass to move from one camp to the next camp, from one ghetto to the next ghetto. But what about the death marches in Africa? What about the sons and daughters of Africa put on desperate death marches for economic gain and financial purposes as we were marched Hundreds of miles, some of us dying in the heat of the sun, trying to move us from the East Coast to the West Coast, trying to move us from Southern Africa back to a coastal area, or from the Northern region to a coastal area. What about the massive death marches that took our lives on the African continent? They said that by the summer of 1942, there were over 400 ghettos, we question that, that the Jews were forced and confined into over 400 ghettos. Well, you might have 400 ghettos in just one state, one county, 
You are removed from your ghettos of Warsaw and Krakow. You are removed from your ghettos, white Jew. But these, the sons and daughters of Africa, we are still in the ghettos of white America to this very day that we sit here tonight. We are still in our ghetto. You talked about how they had to build overhead sidewalks, that Jews were not allowed to walk with the Germans. They built overhead sidewalks. Well, the black man and the black woman, we were not allowed to walk on the same sidewalk with the cracker. When old snuff dipping tobacco to him, talk to him, overall wearing pecker wood was on the sidewalk. We had to jump out in the street and let the pecker wood walk on the sidewalk. They even had what was called laughing barrels. If we were talking and something was funny to us, we couldn't even laugh openly. We had to go and open a barrel up. I've seen some of them in Charleston, not in the Charleston down in the Carolinas, and stick our head down in the barrel and laugh so that when we came back up in the presence of white folks, we were straight-faced. Let's look at it. You've built your Holocaust memorial. Cost over $200 million. That's what Brother Dr. Brock is talking about. That's what Brother James Cameron is talking about in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who is working to set up the Black Holocaust Museum there because of what happened to him and his pe all of our people, but him in the summer, the month of August of 1930, where he was with his two friends, 16, 18, and 19, accused of raping a white woman, which they did not do. You've seen the picture of the brothers hanging there. And Brother James Cameron was the one of the three that escaped the hangman's noose. And now he is setting up, he is now setting up the Black Holocaust Museum in Milwaukee, and we should work to help him set it up and we should set them up all over America. $200 million to set up your African Holocaust Museum. Because the space should be ours. The two million should be ours. That's the point I'm making. It should be our African Holocaust Museum. But you, with a swindler's list, have swindled us, have stolen our birthright. And now our African Holocaust Museum, you claim it. They told me that you get $21 million yesterday, they said, a year, just for operating expenses alone. $21 million from the government of the United Snakes of America, just for operating expenses. Every year, your Holocaust, you say, took place in Germany, took place thousands of miles from here, but no museum, no Holocaust, no 200 million, no 21 million, not even $1,000, not $1 has been put aside. And our Holocaust took place and is still taking place right here on this soil here in the hells of North America. You say you were herded away in boxcars. Where's the photo? Bring it around, Brother Steve. You were herded in boxcars. We were brought in the holes of slave ships. You say it was 1619, but white folks do lie. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that we came here in the year 1555. We didn't come on the Nina, the Pinta, nor the Santa Maria, not that way. And we didn't come on the Mayflower. We didn't land at Plymouth Rock. We got hit in the head with the damn rock. We came in the holes of ships to be made burden bearers for white America, stacked and packed like sardines in a can and like cockroaches in a Coke bottle. We lost over 150 to 200 million black lives 
just in the middle passage, just coming over between Africa and America. We have not only experienced a holocaust, but we have paid a hell of a cost. I didn't come here tonight to be soft at a black holocaust observance. The white folks and the so-called white Jews, you've gotten me busted. And I accept the discipline and the judgment of my spiritual father, leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. There is no division in the nation of Islam. I follow a divine chain of command. I'm saying, who? Oh, there it is. There it is. I follow a divine chain of command. But you've gotten me busted. So I'm no longer national assistant, no longer national spokesman, no, no longer national representative, no longer even a minister in the nation of Islam. So nothing I say now can you attempt to use against God's man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. None of my words can you attempt to use against him. You took a calculated risk that I would turn on my teacher. 30 years ago, we played out this same history with the history of Minister Malcolm X, El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, Brother Omar Wali, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. During the 60s. But the six is a nine turned upside down. And these are the 90s. We're going to turn the six of the 60s right side up in the 90s and put a positive period behind that history of Elijah and Malcolm. There is no Malcolm without Elijah, and there is no Khalid without Farrakhan. Make no mistake about it. So you've gotten me busted. But you can't use my words against my teacher and my spiritual father anymore. And you've gotten me busted, and now I'm going to go buck wild on your behind. I'm not giving you no kind of break today. All praise is due to Allah. Going buck wild on you today. Free me up here. Free me up here. I'm going to be like a pit bulldog. And you know when a pit bulldog bites you in your backside. And that's the way I'm going to be on the Jew. That's the way I'm going to be on the rest of these pecker woods and crackers. I came here tonight to be strong. I didn't come to lighten up. I came to tighten up. Didn't come to pin the tail on the donkey. I came to pin the tail on the honky. That's why I'm here tonight. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Good evening. This is the truth hour. And don't you touch that dial. You stay tuned in to the truth hour. I'm going to lock my jaws in the backside of these no good imposter perpetrating the fraud Jews behind and the rest of these crackers behind. And you know when a bulldog bites, his jaws lock. Because a white man has said one fact, we believe something that a black man has always been telling us. And this, this is a fallacy. It is a fallacy called a appeal to authority. Because somebody who is of a certain ranking or who is of a certain social standing says something, it is right. Mm -mm. It's a fallacy, it's a fallacy. And now because it is a fallacy, Putin has showed us that Jesus is black. He's told us that. Who is the other black person that has always told us that Jesus was black? Who is this other black person that has always told African people, hey, check out, whatever you are learning from those other people are wrong. Those pictures of white Jesus are wrong, you know. 
there's a character, a character of black descent, and his name is Khalid Muhammad. Khalid Muhammad is not a person of yesterday. In fact, Khalid Muhammad died somewhere in 2001. I think he died in 2001, very, very far from now. It's like uh, 22 years to the time when Putin is coming to uh, expose his details. He's always been telling this even before. We had Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan has always been telling us this, you know. And so now, I want us to uh, explore what he has to say, and then I'll give you my thoughts towards the end of the video. Black people put in slavery. They robbed us of our names, our language, our religion, our culture, our God, our folkways, our mores. Robbed us of the very power of our own being. No Jew on the face of the planet Earth can say that you were robbed of your name, your language, your religion, your culture, your God, your folkways, your mores, your norms. If you do, you are a damn liar. And as Jesus said, the truth is not in you. You make me sick. Always got some old crinkly wrinkle cracker that you bring up. Talking about this is one of the Holocaust victims. Dr. Jeffries is a Holocaust victim. My son Farrakhan is a Holocaust victim. Dr. Tony Martin is a Holocaust victim. Our brother, what's your name, brother? Brother who? Brother Jackson Bay is a Holocaust victim. Minister Sean is a Holocaust victim. God damn it, I'm looking at a whole audience full of Holocaust victims. All of you, you and you and you and you and you, all of you are Holocaust victims. Every last one of you is a Holocaust victim. No good, dirty, low-down bastards. make you run off and leave these damn cameras. I don't care nothing about them. And your problem is you're too weak-hearted, you're too chicken-hearted. Some of us, not all, but some of us. I don't teach my babies, my baby about no Christmas addicts. Christmas Addicts was the one who first to die in the American Revolution. The nigga should have died. I teach him about Nat Turner. I teach him about Denmark Vesey. I teach him about Gabriel Prosser. I teach him about Tucson Lovatour. I teach him about Hendrik Christoph. I teach him about Gasoline the Ferocious. I teach him about Will the Executor. I teach him about Bookman. I teach him about Nzinga. I teach him about Kandase. I teach him about Queen Ya Asantewa. I teach him about the warriors and the freedom fighters. I teach my baby about Colin Ferguson, who caught the New York Railroad train just a few days ago. I'd say to every one of you, if you leave Colin Ferguson in that jail to be beat up by these crackers, and now it has come out by some of the black officers that this happens all the time. 
where they set black inmates up in these jails and penitentiaries, and in particular there in Nassau County, and pulled all the black officers out and the black inmates so they could jump on Brother Colin Ferguson because they were mad with him for catching the Long Island train and killing all them white folks. I love Colin Ferguson. I have no official position, so I can say I love him. I love Colin Ferguson. And I say to every one of you with your red, black, and green, your kente cloth, your gay lay, your grand booba, if you will denounce and repudiate and condemn Colin Ferguson, you would, should never utter the name of Nat Turner again from your mouth. Because Colin Ferguson is a modern day Nat Turner. He didn't get on that train of his own. God put him on that train. God spoke to Nat Turner. God spoke to Denmark Vesey. God spoke to Colin Ferguson and say, I want you to catch the Long Island train today. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Let the church say amen one more time. God spoke to Colin Ferguson and said, catch the train. And catch the train. And catch the train today, colon. The train going to Long Island. God sends tornadoes. Is that right? God sends hurricanes. Is that right? God sends earthquakes. Is that right? Well, that day God sent Colin Ferguson. Is that right? God sent Colin Ferguson. If your Holocaust lasted 10 years and ours lasted 500, how can you compare, buddy? If you lost 6 million and we lost 600 million, that's 100 times more than you. How can you compare, buddy? Huh? If you never lost your name, your language, your religion, your culture, your God, your folk ways, your mores, your norms, and in most cases, they haven't lost your mind the way we have. How can you even compare? You are so arrogant. We wouldn't even have to have this kind of discussion if you would just act like a human being. But you can't act like a human being. You can't even act like a human being. We looked at white Germans killing white so-called Jews and other poor white Europeans. Poor meaning poor. We said, man, if the white man will kill another white man like that, if the white man will kill a white baby like that, if the white man will kill a white woman like that, hell, we don't stand a chance. If he will do his own like that, we don't even stand a chance. While we were there, I tried to separate Hitler from the rest of white folks. Yes, I did, for a moment. For a moment, I tried to say that Hitler was just some freak of nature, that he could be set apart from other white people. But then I said, look at this. Where's the other one? Bring it out, Brother Steve. Four black men. They would sell tickets to burn us alive. They had raffle tickets to determine who would get the ear, who would get the big toe from the right foot, who would get the little toe from the left foot. And this freakish, no good, peckerwood, cracker, white man, they all fought over the male organ as to who would take that home. Don't lie and say you didn't. It's the same with your no good freakish rabbis. I read it in the Jerusalem Post. And I call out any of your scholars. I saw the little cracker that was in here a little while ago. What was Richard Cohen? Ran out of here like a screaming, flaming faggot. You hide behind these newspapers. I'm sorry, these Jews papers. You hide behind these Jews' papers 
in these Jews' rooms that you call newsrooms. And so you have the evening, six o'clock, the five o'clock Jews, I mean news. And the 10 o'clock Jews, I mean news. You want to hide. We call you out to debate. Give us your best minds. Give us the best so-called Jew you got. Give us a whole team of them. Give us a whole uh, forum with nothing but your best minds. But you run from us. You hide from us. And I say to every black man in this audience, when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gives the call sometime within a year or so for a million black men to converge on Washington, D.C., not to sing, we shall overcome, every black man should be here. And black woman, if you got a black man who won't go, you should make sure he gets out of the house. You should make sure that he answers the call. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. I was in there honestly because of the spiritual qualities that are in the black man and black woman, God's chosen people. It operates in the revolutionaries, the freedom fighters, the revolutionary scholars, the revolutionary warrior students. It operates in all of us. I was actually trying to set Hitler apart from other white folks. But then I realized that I just couldn't do it. I say they sold tickets. They had excursions, caravans, train rides to see a major sporting event. A nigger lynch today. Two niggers lynched today. Three niggers, four niggers lynched today. Billie Holiday would sing the song of Bessie Smith, one of them about trees in the South with a strange fruit with blood at the root. This is the strange fruit. The black man, black woman, Billie Holiday. Take pregnant black women, bring them out in front of other black women. Strip them naked. There in the Holocaust, you can stay right there, brother. Right in the Holocaust Memorial, they had piles of shoes, as though I was supposed to be impressed. And they said, well, over in Germany, we have just rooms full of shoes. They took all of the personals of these people from them. Wasn't that cruel? I said, God damn it, we didn't even have shoes. You can't pile no shoes up in a room for us because we didn't even have shoes. When they took us from Africa, they stripped us of our diamonds and our gold and our silver, our material resource, our spiritual resource, and our human resource. And when we came here, most of the time we didn't have shoes. We went barefoot. Huh? Stripped the black woman of whatever little tattered rag she had. Nine months pregnant, tie up, tie horses to one leg, horses to the other leg, beat the horses, make them run in opposite directions until they rip and pull the black woman apart and the unborn black baby fall from her and a no good cracker would bring another black woman out, her stomach full nine months with the fruit of her womb take his knife and stick it in a full stomach with the roundness of a stomach, rip it open and stick his AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, hand inside and snatch the unborn black baby from her, throw it to the ground and crush the baby's head with his boot heel and make other pregnant black women watch so that the adrenaline of fear would course its way through her veins and bathe her brains and touch the unborn life in her, hoping that the babies would be born, afraid of a wicked, cruel slave master. Look at this no good bastard. And some of you want to integrate with him. I believe in freedom and independence. I believe in separation and independence. 
a nation of our own. That's right. A nation of our own. That's the book. Uh, some of you don't want to go nowhere. You want to stay right here with the white man. Freedom and independence. If the founding fathers of America could call for freedom and independence under conditions that were nowhere near the conditions that we have been and are operating under today, why can't we call for freedom and independence? Our own flag our own nation, our own government, our own laws. But most of you just want to intellectualize the subject. You think we can read our way out of this. You better read, but you better get up and get ready to get free. Most of you want to sing, we shall overcome. You better add another stanza, we shall overrun. Lift every voice and sing, but you better lift every fist and swing too. At the same time, if we're going to gain freedom and independence. I'm a soldier. I was born that way. I don't care about nothing else but that. But aren't you afraid that you are going to get killed? Jesus, the black revolutionary Messiah, said, he or she who seeks to save his life shall lose his life. And he who is willing to give his life or her life shall save their life. But I don't want to die for the cause. I'll kill for the cause. It's the only way we'll get free. But we got a mighty God that is backing us up today, sending irregular rain, snow, hail, and earthquake, and confusing the government of the white man and the minds of the white man. The Catholic Church admitted their role in slavery. The so-called Jews want to lie. We just were 2% of the population, don't make no difference what percent you were. 75% of you, two thirds of you, according to your own Jewish census takers and statistics, were involved in the slave trade. I didn't say 75% of all the slaves were owned by the Jews. I said 75% of the Jews owned slaves. But you put a spin on it and a twist on it to make it seem ridiculous because you're just a liar and the truth is not in you as Jesus says in the 8th chapter of the book of John that you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning he abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him when he speaketh a lie Jesus said he's a liar and the father of the lie and Jesus said that his word had no place in the Jews Read John starting with the, the eighth chapter, starting with the 31st verse, down, down to the 44th verse. And when I say Jesus up here, I'm not talking about no blonde haired, blue eyed, pale skin, buttermilk complexion, white Jesus. I'm talking about a black Jesus. That the Bible says would have nappy hair and his body would be like burnt bronze or brass as though it had been burnt in an oven. Give the white man his white Jesus back, put it in the garbage can, set it out on the corner, and let the garbage man pick it up and take it to the garbage dump. It's a form of spiritual genocide, a form of mental genocide, and Holocaust. 40 to 50 million Holocaust survivors still in the death camps of America, still in the ghettos of America. Still robbed of our names with Harry McGillicuddy, Jim Dandy O'Houlihan, Abraham Lincoln Culpepper, Hattie May Hamburger with lettuce and tomatoes on the side. <laughs> robbed completely of a knowledge of ourselves. No other people in the annals of time have been so robbed and spoiled. The Bible said these are a people who are robbed and spoiled. They are snared in holes and hidden in prison houses. But we must rise up like rock. Rise up like rock and take on a new life and take on a new birth. I say I criticize the Pope. I don't have any respect for the Pope. The hell you mean I called him a cracker? 
So damn what? The Pope don't like me. The Pope does not respect my leader and teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He has no respect for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he is one of the perpetrators in our genocide and our current condition. You offer an apology? We are sorry. Everybody else gets reparation. Damn Jews get over 70 billion, over 100 billion. But you offer us, I owe you an apology. <laughs> we are so sorry. <laughs> no, use your influence to get reparations for us. Use your influence to ease the debt that is strangling and choking the life out of African nations from the World Bank and the IMF and the other MFs. You say, and this is the first time you heard from me on this, and I think you should at a black holocaust observance. Well, you called for the death of the men, the women, the children, and the babies. Hell, you had heard that here at Howard University long before King College. Killing our men, our women, our I remember in my philosophy class, my lecturer, my professor, he once asked to me, Evans, young boy, yes, I answered, uh, are you a thinking thing or Evans? Are you a thing that thinks? Um, I was surprised by why the professor was asking me such a question. So I also want to ask you, are you a thinking thing or are you a thing that thinks? Who decides what we should believe? Who decides what a group of people should believe? What is the moral standpoint? What is the objective reference? We should sit and say, this is how we should think. This is how we shouldn't think. Or do we even exist right now? Am I existing? Or while watching this video, are you dreaming that you are watching this video? Or are you watching this video for real? Am I even a hum real human being? Or am I just a computer program playing on your phone or whichever place you are watching this video? Moreover, the reason why I'm asking this is because of this. Africans, many of us are like the flag. The flag follows the wind. When the wind hits west, the flag faces west. When the wind hits east, the flag faces east. Yes. The other day we saw the president of Russia, Putin, he opened some vault and he said that Jesus is black. He exposed, he showed Jesus is black. I don't know who that Jesus is. He showed also black Mary and black somewhere, black, black divinities because those were symbols of divine uh, beings, you know. Many Africans were shocked and they even believed, ah, because Putin has said it, it has to be true. Now, I, while, I was, <laughs> while I was watching a video, while I was going through my comment section, I got this comment and it was very interesting. Uh, it's from a brother called Be Amazed with this. That's, the, that's his handle. He says that, good video, but as far as Putin goes, well, many of us African-Americans knew this, but when we try telling our own people, we don't listen. Our own people don't listen and say we are crazy. I have lost many friends from age 10 to 40. But every time a white man tells African people one historical fact, then you believe without even researching it. So they truly know it, you know? Some information, if one of your own tell you about African history, you never had, you have the internet to search to verify the information given and that you find online. As a child, until not so long ago, I had to spend many, many years searching many, many books. There is no reason today any person of African or African-American or black descent should still refuse truth told by them with their own kind, you know, around the world. 
but accept it from a white man anywhere around the world. Shame, shame, shame. He's just buttering African countries up for the false screen to make African countries believe he's more than a friend for a false idea that he wants to help them 100%, while at home putting his tail of the endless gold they can retrieve from the Congo and other places in Africa. He might just be a tiny bit more fair the other, to the other countries, but he is instilling his government military called mercenaries uh, here in Africa. They come peacefully so they can easily scope, uh, make notes and maps of area and gain all the info they need on people they will use when the real plan rolls out, which will be used to profit Putin's countries, people, economy and military first and most before they give back to Africa in a minimal amount. And resistance of the people, the mercenaries will be the enemy. Putin is a friend now for reasons here and there not for long time as no one who will treat African countries he deals with 100% equal. Now, this uh, African American is questioning African beliefs. He is telling us to be careful of Putin. Putin might be having some nasty ideas behind him exposing the black Jesus. Putin might be, might be having uh, some ideas uh, behind him uh, for giving African debts to Russia. You know, another point he said that I kind of believe in him. When a white man says the white man is right, when a black man says to a black man or to a white man, that's not true, even if... It's... So let's have a little bit of history about the life of Khalid Muhammad and how he became to, he came to his position to the point, where, to the point of uh, coming to be a leader of the black American people. It was called the Black Panther Movement in, uh, in USA. Now, here is what you need to know about Khalid Muhammad. He was born Harold Moore Jr. in Houston, Texas in 1948. Khalid Muhammad's journey from a segregated upbringing to becoming a provocative and influential figure within the black community in the USA is emblematic of the complex struggles and triumphs of the civil rights era and beyond. His early experiences with racism and discrimination served as the crucible for his lifelong commitment to activism and advocacy. Khalid Muhammad's multifaceted life and legacy of focusing on his role as a champion of black empowerment and identity, particularly through his assertion that black people are the true Hebrews of the, of the Holy Bible. This is now a black man convincing black people. In 2001, even it was before that, it was way in the 90s, he tried telling us, but we don't believe until Putin in 2024 comes and tells us, now we believe. How hypocritical can we be? How brainwashing can we be for this, this kind of thing to happen? How is this, you know? So, Khalid Muhammad, life and legacy. Khalid Muhammad, uh, Muhammad's trajectory into activism began early. It was shaped by the harsh realities of segregation and inequalities in the 1950s and 60s in America. His immersion in the teachings of the Nation of Islam under the tutelag of uh, leaders like Malcolm X and Louis Farrakhan provided him with a platform to channel his passion for social justice. Rising through the ranks of the Nation of Islam, Muhammad's uncompromising rhetoric and confrontational style quickly garnered attention, earning him both admirers and de uh, detractors. Despite facing opposition and controversy, Muhammad's impact on the black community was profound, you know, inspiring a new generation of, of activists and challenging mainstream narratives on race and identity. Now, what was Khalid Muhammad's view on black identity. Before a white person comes to tell us about black identity, what did a black person know about black identity? And here's what we need to understand as per the video also. At the heart of Khalid Muhammad's message was his assertion that black people are the true descendants of the ancient Hebrews mentioned in the Holy Bible. Drawing on historical evidence and biblical references, Muhammad argued passionately for the recognition of black people's rightful place in history and civilization. 
His belief, this belief resonated deeply with many uh, black community who had long sought affirmation of their identity and heritage in the face of systematic racism and white supremacy. Muhammad's teachings served as a rallying cry for black, and, for black pride and self-awareness, empowering individuals to embrace their culture and spiritual heritage. Now, what was his influence on the black community in the United States? As per the video, we can discuss that. Uh, Muhammad's influence extended far beyond his fiery speech and provocative rhetoric to shape the disclosure on race, on race relationship in America. His uncompromising stance on issues of race and identity forced mainstream society to confront uncomfortable truths about systemic racism and inequality. Moreover, Muhammad's message for black pride and self-determination inspired individuals to reclaim their agencies and challenge the status quo. From grassroots organization to large-scale movements like the Million Man March, examples, around, examples abound of how Muhammad's teaching galvanized the black community and fueled the fights for justice and equality. You know? Now, Muhammad was that black man who had such a huge global impact and he left such a huge legacy. For him to be had up to today, he must have left such a huge legacy to the people of African descent, you know? Now, while Muhammad's influence was most keenly felt within the USA, his message resonated with black communities worldwide. In countries grappling with the legacies of colonialism and oppression, Muhammad's teachings provided a framework for understanding and resistance. From South Africa to Brazil in the Caribbean, Examples abound of how Muhammad's ideology inspired solidarity and activism among black individuals fighting for liberation and equality. His legacy as a global advocate for black empowerment continues to reverberate, serving as a beacon of hope and inspiration for marginalized communities everywhere. Just like any other person, just like any other person, Muhammad with his ideology of convincing people that indeed the true Hebrews are the black people, according to Muhammad, he must have faced some criticism and controversies. It's normal. There is no good deed that goes unpunished. That's human nature. Here's what we need to know. Despite his significant contribution to black liberation movement, Khalid Muhammad was not without his detractors accusation of anti-Semitism and hate speech dodged him throughout his career. It casted a shadow uh, over his reputation and leading to division within the black community. While some viewed Muhammad as a fearless champion of black rights, others condemned his inflammatory rhetoric and divisive tactics, questioning his commitment to unity and cooperation. Despite this criticism, Muhammad's impact on the black community remains undeniable. His legacy is a testament on the ongoing struggle for liberation and equality in the United States of America. To conclude on why uh, someone like Khalid Muhammad standing up front and telling Africans their true identity and legacy is important. We don't have to always listen to the white person to tell us the truth, no. <laughs> We, are, we have faced a lot of difficulties because we were listening to one side. We should listen to both sides. We have two ears, one for this side, this other one for this side. To conclude, Khalid Muhammad's life and legacy serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring quest for justice and equality in the face of oppression and discrimination. His uncompromising commitment to black empowerment and identity challenged societal norms and inspired a new generation of activists. While his controversial statement and confrontational style may have alienated some, Muhammad's impact on the black community in the USA and around the world cannot be overstated. As we continue to navigate the complexities of race and identity in this 21st century, the teachings of Muhammad has served as a beacon of hope resilience and guiding us forward in the ongoing struggle of liberation and equality and most importantly seeking our own identity not forced identity not misplaced identity
many of us black people believe that we are the descendants of, we are the original Hebrews. I personally don't think all black, but maybe some group of black. I have the rights to my opinion. That's my opinion. You can share your opinion in the comment section. However, I leave you with this point. Truth does not choose a mouth to speak from. Truth comes from a mouth which is ready to be listened to. Sometimes the truth is not something you are willing to know or you are willing for it to happen the way you want. It might be something very, very improbable. As Sherlock Holmes puts it, if you remove the impossible, whatever you are left with, however improbable, that must always be the truth. And these are the words of Sherlock Holmes. He adds and say, he adds this, uh, The art of deceptions is to hide in plain sight. You know? The art of deception is to hide in plain sight. Sometimes we've bought the narrative of deception and traded it with the narrative of truth. It's time to take it back. We need to listen to our own people. We need to listen to our own individuals. We can no longer say the proverb, a, 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 a prophet is not respected in their own home. Charity begins at home. Let us listen to our own people. Let us not crucify our own people. Africans listen to Africans. Africans listen to the black. It doesn't have to be the white to tell us what to do. We can tell ourselves what to do. That's all for today, guys. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to the channel. I'll appreciate.